Hello, and welcome to the first in another series of short videos we're going to do. This particular um, video, we wanted to explain some of the background of what goes into us actually buying a picture. I know it sounds obvious that you just turn up somewhere and buy a picture, but there's a, actually a lot more to it than that, and especially when you're looking at old master pictures, we'd like to try and explain some of the work that goes into the buying, the restoration, and all the background work that you don't normally see. We can see on the screen now a uh, rather grubby looking portrait of an 18th century lady, probably painted in the 1710, 1720 period. And she looks a bit distressed, not literally herself, but the picture looks in quite a state, very, very dirty. The frame is uh, really quite damaged and uh, it, grimy as well. There's one or two minor um, uh, holes in the canvas, small holes in the canvas. So many people would be wondering why on earth you'd want that. And we hope that during this video we can explain a little bit more about it. We found this picture in an auction sale uh, in the north of England. I wasn't able to go and see it myself. I sent a colleague of mine to, uh, who was much closer to go and have a look because I could see that the quality of this piece was very, very good. And it was that that led me down the road of trying to buy it. Well, the paintings arrived. Uh, my friend had been up to uh, collect the picture, uh, driven all the way back down south. You'll notice that a small white area has appeared in the picture uh, at the top here. And uh, this is just a little bit of waxed paper uh, and it was done for transport because the picture is in fact very, very fragile. And although most of the paint is solidly on the surface, uh, there was an area of flaking paint just up here. And so this paper has been applied uh, just to stop any of the paint from falling off. And you can see she's looking much the same. Um, these strange areas that you see here, are they look as if they might be old repairs. They're not. In actual fact, what we're looking at here is a picture that has almost certainly never been cleaned, never been repaired in its life. We are 300 years after um, it was painted. And uh, really, there's been very little messing about that's happened to the picture. The frame could well be the original frame, but it's been altered later according to fashion. And so it's been given these French mouldings that you see around the edge here. These would not have originally been on the frame. And it was a bit of interior decor updating at some stage, probably in the 1820s, um, that that was done. But the frame is almost certainly uh, her original frame. We have the inscription at the top there, so we know that she was Countess of Arlington, um, and we know, so we know who she is. We then got to find out exactly who she's by. She is by one of the very good uh, first division painters of portraits in um, the early part of, well, the reign of, end of the reign of Queen Anne, um, beginning of uh, George I period and it is astonishing that this is a time capsule uh, that's why we were so interested in it um, because underneath all this dirt and underneath what's been done here is going to be the most astonishing picture and we're going to show you the process that we would need to go through to uh, present it in its final form now we hope to reveal some of what it is that gets us excited uh, about a picture like this. And what I'm going to do is take a small swab of white spirit to show you a little of the quality that you can't easily see through this very cloudy varnish. So going straight to the face here, and we know that the paint in this area is very stable but one's obviously got to go very, very gently. One can see, starting to be revealed, just how amazing the quality, this lock of hair just falling down over her shoulder, 
and this beautiful expression she has uh, through here, we're going very gently just to make sure you can see the depth of colour behind here. Very, very rich colours we're going to have. Going further down here, you can see this glorious red and blue that she's wearing. So these areas here of discoloured paint, if I go over them like that, you can see they completely disappear. And it's just where the varnish and the paint itself has slightly congealed over the years and has given these sort of lighter, shinier patches. What we're going to do now is to have a little look at the back of the picture. Dina's a funny people, really. Um, how we can get so excited about a filthy piece, a few bits of wood and a piece of canvas. Um, this is the back of the picture that we've just bought. And uh, it's weird how we find this rather exciting. And the reason for that is it's in such an incredibly untouched state. So this is the canvas that it uh, was originally painted on. Many paintings have been relined. Certainly nearly all the paintings of this age have had a, a new backing. And we'll come to that. We'll show you um, what that is. These are the original outer sections of wood. And you can see all the dust of ages on the back of it. Um, there are some almost indecipherable inscriptions on the back here. and We will come to those later. We'll be able to reveal them, hopefully, and read a little bit more about them. So what we've got to do now is the next stage of the process is photography, uh, careful photography of the picture as it is now. Then it will start to be cleaned, uh, which is a very, very delicate process for a picture like this. Uh, and then it will be relined. So this canvas that we're looking at now will be backed with another piece of canvas which will make the surface very, very uh, even, not too flat, but very even, and it'll be much, much more uh, firm and solid. The paint won't be flaking off. The white paper you saw on the front of it will have gone, obviously, and uh, all of this area will look much cleaner. We will sadly have to replace this original, this thing is called a strainer. They're sometimes called stretches, but they're the ones that you tap out and make them a bit larger. This one's fixed, which is very typical of the period of the early 18th century. And um, it will have to be changed because sadly, um, uh, we'll keep all the information from it, but sadly uh, it's not possible to put any tension on this because it's actually quite uh, fragile now. Well, we can't resist the opportunity to show you a little bit about how it's going to look and just what's underneath here. I'm hoping my restorer is not watching this, um, but luckily uh, we do know what we're doing here and we're going very carefully. Uh, it's lucky this isn't smell-o-vision because um, some of this stuff smells pretty strong. Um, and what we're going to do is start off here to give you some idea of what we can see under here is we're going to start off with a, a surface cleaner. Now this is basically a soap that we're using here. Um, we're not in the least bit worried about these cracks here. They're all solid um, and uh, they will be slightly uh, helped when we come to do the restoration side. And certainly the relining process we talked about earlier uh, will make a big, big difference to this. So this is, as I say, just a soap. We're going to neutralise that with some white spirit, just to make sure that's not... Uh, you can see how much dirt there is on the surface here. Now that, what we've removed there, is literally just the surface muck of uh, ages that's all and we can do a little bit further up moving to another area uh, of the picture and again this is just taking off the surface dirt to give you some idea of what's sitting underneath it and uh, as you can see on the swab here 
Uh, we're not going to this bit here because that's slightly delicate. This bit that we're doing here just under the nose, etc., is very solid. The paint's fine. Um, we're just going to go for here. And you can see just how much surface dirt there is on this. It's quite astonishing. Um, it's beginning to come into great three dimension. And as yet, we haven't even touched the varnish, uh, the original varnish that will be on the picture. And uh, this soap is doing quite a lot for it. But you'll notice that we're concentrating on an area which is light colored paint. It's got white mixed in with it. And even though we're just using soap, um, uh, a liquid soap, it's always best to start on an area where the paint is the hardest and the white paint always tends to be dried the hardest. Um, and that's why the area where we're then going to try and remove a little bit of the varnish will be in this area here. And again, you, you're looking at it and probably seeing this spider's web like cracks all over it and uh, this is actually something that doesn't worry us because it's one of the things that shows how old it is. When the restoration is finished, those will be much reduced and uh, you'll hardly see them at all. Now, what we're using is a very light um, solvent here to try and remove the varnishes, the old varnishes that are on here. And you can see by the swab here that it's gone this brown color. That's fine. That's just the old varnish, the old yellowed varnish coming off. This is the area we surface cleaned earlier. And we can see here just how much of the yellow varnish this is bringing off um, just by doing this very, very gently. And uh, this will give you some idea of just how dramatic the clean is in something like this.